Hello there. Liz and Quasi were hoping for some acclaim, but all they're getting right now is a severe kicking in the financials. So the International Monetary Fund, the IMF, has stepped in and told our Prime Minister and Chancellor to reverse their plans to cut taxes for the rich in the UK. And the Bank of England has been forced to spring into action to defend UK pensions from collapse. Not a good look for Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng in their new roles as UK Prime Minister and Chancellor of the Exchequer. Now, although the market turmoil level is high, all stoked up further by speculators and opposition politicians, there are those who think this will be short-lived and that things will quieten down and be mostly forgotten by next month. But I'm not so sure. Now, the IMF has taken the very unusual step of intervening in the economic affairs of a developed nation by urging Liz Trust to change course on cutting the 45% rate for the very top earners to 40%. Although what it has to do with the IMF is a bit unclear to me. Do they think they now run things? Or are they gearing up to do it? Now, either the IMF is our friend and is trying to help us out. Or maybe the IMF wants to ensure that we don't recover and end up doing quite well in the future. Perhaps the IMF is hoping that the UK, amongst others, will be forced to go cap in hand to them for a bailout, at which point, as the global lender of last resort, they can dictate the terms and what the UK has to do to get the money. And this is the same IMF that has presided over a period when millionaires and billionaires and oligarchs across the globe have thrived, while others have been left behind. But now it speaks out against the UK. However, it has been claimed that a sterling crisis could cause global instability. Who knew that Brexit UK had that much clout? An IMF spokesperson said that Kwarteng should use his fiscal plan announcement on the 23rd of November as an opportunity to U-turn, as it would present an early opportunity for the UK government to consider ways to provide support that is more targeted and re-evaluate the tax measures, especially those that benefit high-income earners. Something that stung an angry reaction from Tory Trussonomics backers like Lord Frost, who said that the IMF was advocating the usual conventional approach that always leads to low growth and weak productivity. The only way forward for Britain is lower taxes, spending restraint and significant economic reform, said Frost. Liz Truss and Kwasi Kwarteng are rightly focused on delivering this and they should tune out the criticism from those who are still in the intellectual world of Gordon Brown. And bear in mind that the higher rate of tax brings in very little in the grand scheme of things, although the Labour Party has promised a hell of a lot of spending when they bring it back in and get about two billion quid for their troubles. And according to the House of Commons Library, in an overview of tax statistics published on the 21st of June this year, the 10% of income taxpayers with the largest incomes contribute over 60% of income tax receipts. But many people on the left would rather that figure was much nearer 100%, accompanied by the sound of pips squeaking and the wailing of the formerly wealthy but I think those with money would be long gone before that happened. Now, the Bank of England has had to take action today to prevent a UK pensions meltdown because part of this market turmoil includes investors selling off UK gilt-edged bonds, government debt, as the chances, however remote, of a default rise. And as they are sold off, the price of gilts goes down meaning their yields go up, because if you buy a gilt cheap and the gilt performs as planned, 
then you will get more for the money you paid, more yield. But that increased yield is where you'd need to price the interest rate of any new gilts that you're intending to issue, so pushing up borrowing costs into the future. So the higher the yield on current bonds, the more expensive it gets to borrow money, and right now the government needs to borrow. But as the yields in these gilts rises, pension funds are getting hit with margin calls for cash to use as collateral from fund managers that run liability-driven investment funds for them. And the fund managers get hit by margin calls from investment banks. And according to The Times, pension funds hold some £400 to £500 billion pounds worth of these LDI funds, and the margin calls have been running at billions of pounds a day since Kwasi Kwarteng stood up and made his statement on Friday. And with only days to pay the margin call, the pension funds are forced to sell the bonds. Big finance, it seems, can also be a big gamble at times. Anyway, the Bank of England has done two things about this. The first is to cancel next week's gilt issuance programme, presumably because they wouldn't get sufficient bids for tanking bonds. And the other is to start buying long-term gilts from the markets to bolster their prices and push the yield down, so reducing or maybe even eliminating those huge margin calls. Now, this is the sort of thing the Bank of England did after the credit crunch for market liquidity reasons. Now they're doing it to prevent a pension meltdown, so it would probably be more accurate to call this pension easing or LDI easing or something. And this rather unforeseen development is being put down to the Chancellor acting before warning the markets. And the Times quotes an unnamed senior city figure as saying, The first thing the Chancellor needs to do is to keep his mouth shut. The gilt market does not want to hear about any more unfunded tax cuts. Hmm. If things are as bad as some say they are, then just about everything is unfunded right now. Now, I said yesterday that governments don't like falling house prices because it reeks of economic failure. And the news today is that in the face of an imminent house price slump, the government is pushing forward with a scheme to stimulate the property market. The Chancellor of the Exchequer, Kwasi Kwarteng, has already slashed stamp duty in the hope of triggering action in the housing market. But now he and the Prime Minister Liz Truss are pushing forward with the plan to make it easier for renters to get mortgages in a wider plan to increase access to mortgages. And that plan is to allow renters to use a good rent payment record as proof that they can afford a mortgage. Although the deposit may still be an issue, unless the government gets creative over that as well. But right now, the banks and building societies are having other ideas as they pull mortgage deals from the market, nearly a thousand of them at the last count. Now, the experts are saying that all the financial market turmoil we are seeing will cause house prices to drop by about 15%. But I also gather that mortgage advisors are telling people to pile in now and buy whatever they can afford, presumably on a long-term fixed rate, so buying before interest rates go through the roof. And the first rate rise will almost definitely occur in November, if not before that. But if people are rushing in now, then that will hold house prices up for a while due to the increased demand but that will only last until the buyers dry up or until early November. Then we'll see the government get real creative in thinking up ways to get people to put their money into housing, all helping to boost growth. And because rising house prices make people feel that the economy must be doing well, even when it leaves them out in the home ownership cold, because we're British. And Labour is as well aware of this as the Tories are, Keir Starmer has promised to increase the home ownership rate to 70%.